People Talking Sports, joined by one of the best Knicks of my lifetime for sure, Latrell Sprewell. Thanks for joining us, man. Not a problem. Glad to be here. This is uh, a big one. I mean, you like take me back to Knicks being really competitive. That well, 99 team? Well, how old were you? <laughs> when we <laughs> we're in 99, how old were you? I was 13. It was the well, same year as my bar mitzvah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what can I say? It was a good well, time. Well, it was a while ago, but I mean, we had so much fun that year. I mean, a, a lot of people, every time I walk around New York, I have fans coming up to me talking about the 99 team and, and how much they love that team. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just glad I was a part of it, for sure. You were the part of it. I mean, you were on both ends. There are guys in the league right now, like, the guy I see now who kind of reminds me of your game a little bit is Jimmy Butler. Do you see that at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah, because he plays both ends. He plays hard and yeah. plays with a lot of passion. Uh, for me, I think the guy I like to, to in today's game, I think is Westbrook. He just attacks the basket. He's 94 feet. He's full speed, um, never letting off the gas. So I, I like Westbrook a lot. But Jimmy is a good friend of mine, actually, and um, I see a lot of similarities in our games as well. Uh, yeah, you used to throw it down like Westbrook, like two hands. Yeah, that was my signature dunk right yeah. there, for sure. The, the two-hand tomahawk. I loved it. Yeah. I miss that. I like, an, I I like wish a... I wish I could do that now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not dunk anymore? No. Well, I'm done. I haven't even tried, so <laughs> the old knees and back, so I'm, I'm done with that. I did a gig on a cruise ship about a week ago, and I dunked on a nine-foot hoop, and I was well, pretty proud of myself. Well, that doesn't count. It's nine feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> so uh, that team was like, you know, you, Houston, LJ, Ward, Ewing. I mean, that was that was an, that was the most insane run. Can be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it was fun. Be, yeah. Well, I think the thing for us, we were AC. Yeah. We barely got in that year. Um, it was the lockout year, so it was a half a season. We had a lot of new pieces, and it took us a, a while to gel together. But once we clicked and got on the same page, I mean, we just took off and never looked back. So. Coming in at the eighth seed and going up against Miami, they had a really good record that year. Yeah. Nobody really expected us to win, so you know we just went out there and, and played like we had nothing to lose. That Houston floater, that when when that went in, it bounced around a little bit, huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Uh, I mean, I know it. Probably, it was probably Allen's biggest shot of his life, I would think. I mean, yeah. I, I'll never forget it. And I mean, you were 13 and you like remember it like it was yesterday. So I mean. <laughs> It's just one of those things you'll, you'll never forget if you're a part of something like that. You had, I mean, that game five, we lost to uh, San Antonio in the finals. But your game five, like, it gives me chills still to think about. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't want to see them celebrate it on the garden floor. I mean, I still feel bad that it happened. Um, I just, what can you say? I mean, they, Tim, he was, I mean, he's still, well, not now, but he was so tough then. I mean, even yeah. throughout his entire career, just, I can just remember just him LJ playing him, and he turns around and off the glass there five or t six times in a row. It's like, how do you stop this guy? There's nothing we could do with him. So he, he was in the zone. I think I was in the zone, and we were just going back and forth. Like I said, it was a great game. Unfortunately, we couldn't win it. Um, but, you know, it was a lot of fun, though. I see guys now, they, you know, they don't always play. The, like, you had a motor. You were a rare guard with a motor. You know, that you don't think, you know, I guess you would consider a shooting guard small forward, but there weren't many, like, Mostly, like, maybe it's a big man who runs up and down like that, but you kind of were constant, your pace. And a lot of your stats aren't reflected in the, in the score sheet. That well, I think that's why a lot of people appreciated the way I played. I, mean, I had one speed. I mean, when I was out on the floor, I was just, I mean, that's just the way I know how to play. I, mean, I didn't know how to play any other way. So if I got the ball, I'm looking to push it. And, and Jeff would often get mad at me because I was used to playing under Nelly and getting up and down, and we are used to getting buckets and going fast. And so I'd come up and you know, have the ball and shoot a three. Jeff would look at me like, what are you doing? Like, move the ball around a little bit. I was wide open. You know? <laughs> you know, like, it's a good shot. So, so I had to learn. I mean, it's a different system. And it took a while for me to adjust. But, um, yeah, like I said, the West Coast offense is it's a lot of fun as a player because you obviously get to go up and down. It's more fast-paced. you got to be in great shape. Like, not absolutely, pull it off. absolutely. I mean, you got to be in great shape anyway to be in the NBA. I mean, right. it's, I mean training camp is the hardest part. Getting, getting back involved in thing over the summer is just, it's just tough to get back in shape. But once you do, I mean, you know, that's what it's about, trying to be in the best physical shape you can be to, so you can go out and perform the best you can. Do you see, like, I kind of, it's a different age now, because I see Porzingis over the offseason, he's, like, posting videos of him, like, lifting and stuff. Like, that's a different time. Well, it's obviously a different era. I mean, what was it, 20 years ago almost? So, I mean, what can you say? I mean, the, the, I mean, Would that have been your thing? Would you have posted it, you uh, think? I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I'm a little low-key. I mean, I think today's game, for me, is just seeing how small the game is. I mean, 
when I was like with the Knicks, for instance, we had Patrick, LJ, you know, we had a bunch of centers, power forwards, you know, big guys. And it's, you just don't see that in the day's game. It's, it's, right. it's a, it's a, I mean, I think I would be a small forward. Well, I paid to play small forward here, so I probably would have played four a little bit in right. today's game. So, and you just didn't see that um, in my era. So the eras are definitely different, but uh, it, it's, it's fun to watch the way it's um, transitioned. And, and I like the fast paced game. I mean, it, I just, you know, Obviously, I wish I would have been born a little later to be involved in it, but but I have fun in my era. Like I said, it's just different eras, and you know, it's, it's fun to watch. But you say different eras, it's also interesting because I feel like there are years where you would average like say 16 a game, and that's in the modern NBA it would probably be like 22 a game or something because it was so much harder. I'm watching these old games, and you just getting the shot. It looks like you get hit every time. Well, especially when I was here with the Knicks, we, we played more of a slow-paced, ball-control type of style. So it, we weren't necessarily looking to get up and down and go. We were grinded out, and our thing was getting stops. I mean, Jeff was really a stickler for getting stops. I think he picked that up from Riles. Um, Riles definitely is a defensive-minded coach. So that's, that's just the way we play. We grinded it out every night. And that's why the games against Miami, I mean, they were tough. Low-scoring, physical games, but they were still a lot of fun. Do you, what's your craziest memory of Jeff as a coach? The time he jumped out in front of Marcus when he swung at Danny Ferry <laughs> and he came to practice with like six stitches <laughs> and a black eye. He's like, ah, I took one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> That made me love him so much. Yeah. I really love Van well, he Gundy jumped in coach. like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pow. I was like, wow. So, yeah, I think that's, that's the funniest by far. Yeah. And he was, a, he was a disciplinarian for sure, right? Absolutely. But Jeff, I mean, he's, you know, at the time we were like, he's just, he's so, like, into every little detail. You know, he was like, Jeff, Jeff you need to get some sleep, man. You just, <laughs> you know, after we land, he goes right right to the practice facility and starts watching film all night and we practice at 10 30 and he's you can tell he's been up all night but hey, that's just how meticulous uh, he was when he coached he looks very stressed out well he looks a lot better now yeah uh, he, he doesn't have the pressure and obviously there's a lot of pressure uh, to perform in new york so uh it was a lot of pressure and, and jeff he wants to win so he has that passion and drive to win so he he definitely um he gave his all for sure What's interesting to me is you had the, you know, the incident in Golden State, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the Knicks pick you up, and it was like that thing where you're like, was there a moment where you're like, you had all this time off, was there a moment where you're like, I wonder how they're going to receive me here in New York? Well, you always wonder that, even if it hadn't been New York, wherever I had ended up, I was, you know, going to probably have those thoughts, and, uh, you know, obviously some people were against it, and others were fine with it, so for me, I think the thing that I needed to do was just get out on the floor, and, um, Showcase my talent, you know, keep my nose clean and just just go forward and look forward and not behind. This Knicks team, like, what are you seeing that you're liking in this year's Knicks team right now? Because they're playing pretty well. Well, I think um, right now they're just playing with a lot more passion. I think that was the thing that was missing. Just just, just go out and play with passion and, and fire. I mean, it, that can make up for a lot of things on the floor if you just go out and, 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 and give 100%. I think New York fans are, are used to seeing teams like the team that I was a part of that would go out and just just compete and you knew even if we didn't win the game you were like wow I mean those guys really played hard even though they didn't win you know I feel like I got my money's worth you know what I mean yeah. so the, and, and I think they're doing that now guys are people see the effort and they see the intensity and, and they see the passion on the floor and that, that that means a lot that's cool all right well we got more uh with Latrell right after this break stick around and people talking sports Back on People Talking Sports, we're joined by, of course, Latrell Sprewell again, uh, great actor Bill Camp, who you know from The Leftovers, The Night Of, and uh, some guy we found on the street. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> this is uh, a lot of great. Spree, by the way, and I, we took some big risks with our shoes today. I'm wearing what looks to be moon boots, and those are sparkling. They're unbelievable. I don't know how Pat played in those. They look a little heavy. <laughs> I don't think he played in these. I think it was a money grab. Oh, okay. Well, hey. Yeah, Bill and I did not get the memo. Uh, <laughs> a lot of hot gossip going on. First off, LeBron kind of took a shot at our Knicks rookie, the French Prince of Bel Air. That's what I'm calling him now. Uh, Frank Nilakina. You're putting the Bel Air on there. Yeah. It's weird. It doesn't make sense, I, I guess. <laughs> you just revealed that my, we, we ordered shirts. 
<laughs> yeah, we should probably take them back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this uh, is what. <laughs> this is what. Uh, I'm sorry, Spree. Uh, this is what. Uh, <laughs> this is what LeBron said. He said the Knicks passed in a really good one regarding Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, Dallas got a diamond in the rough. He should be a Nick. This is going to make some headlines, but he should be a Nick. Dallas is definitely. I don't know. They're excited he didn't go there. I mean, this is upsetting to me. But then KP and Enos Cantor both said, we got who we want. So that made me happy. Well, you got to, I mean, when you got your teammates sticking up for you, it obviously makes you feel good. So I think that was, uh, you know, a smart move, a good move, and it shows us uh, you know, the team just sticking together, you know? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, how we're 12 games into the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me you got to give somebody at least a year or two to, you know, yeah, see what they do. See what they exactly. do. I mean, you sure. never know how those guys are making judgments right away about. It. LeBron does this. Like every time LeBron does a social media post, you have to read into it. It's almost like an ex you dated when they leave you a voicemail. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, listen yeah. to it a bunch. You're like, what did that mean? What's he really trying to say? <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. know about that. I, I had no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like, I don't know. For me, it's Dennis Smith Jr., uh, Neil Kina. It just it's wins and losses. So it's like I don't know. Like, don't worry about who the Knicks drafted. Worry about beating the Hawks, because you didn't do that. So, wow. shots fired. Yes. Steve Avito, at yes. LeBron James, I'm not afraid. <laughs> he is in town tonight. You should be careful. I but, did uh, not know that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, here's what I think about Neil Aquina, is what excites me about him is his potential. He's the second youngest yeah. player in the NBA. He's got a wingspan of a seven-footer. He's a point guard. And, you know, Dennis Smith is a very skilled player, but I think he's got a smaller ceiling. Like, Neil Aquina could be kind of a unicorn in his position the same way Porzingis is. These are guys that like when you played against, didn't it annoy you when you had to go up against like a point guard who was, I don't know, 6'6", six, six, or, or a shooting guard who was like 6'8", someone who's a little bigger? Well, I, for me it's fun. I mean, you love the competitiveness of it. You just want to go out there and you want to compete against the best people. That's just what's going to get you better. If you're just playing against the guys that aren't good, then what's the point of that? So, I mean, for me as, a, as an athlete, you always want to play against guys that are good because it kind of gauges, you get a gauge of where you're at and where your skill level is. For sure. Well, another big story, uh, this was all over everything today. LeBron James rides the subway. They hopped on the public transportation. It was LeBron, it was Dwayne Wade. This is funny, because like back in the day, this is just how the Knicks would travel. Like Phil Jackson, Walt Frazier, they would right. just ride the train to games, you know? But now it's like, oh my God, because LeBron is so famous right now. It is, it is a big deal, I guess. That's a huge deal. I've, I've only, uh, when I was with the Knicks, we got snowed in, I believe, in D.C. and had to take the train from D.C here and but that was the only time we ever did it so yeah it's definitely a big deal speaking as like a celebrity who rides the subway like all the time <laughs> you know it's just nice you know people come up to you like all kinds of stuff it's great do you ride the subway bill I, uh you know that would be a lie no i don't ride the subway. <laughs> <laughs> but that has nothing to do with like being harassed or hassled by people or anything yeah, that happens yeah. to my wife all the time but no i i i drive after riding the subway for 30 years, well, I drive. How, how does LeBron get on the subway? Did, he had to get harassed, right? I think he did, but he was videotaping it, so maybe he invited it a little. Oh, okay. I don't know. I love that he has Wade with him all the time. They are like, they are BFF. It's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a friend like that on the Knicks? Camby. Camby. Marcus, yeah. I love Rick, that. Rick Brunson. We were, I mean, we were a tight group anyway. Yeah. But yeah, mostly for me, it was Marcus and, and Rick Brunson, John Wallace. So, yeah. Wallace is our guy. Yeah, I know, yeah. He's a regular on the show. Yeah, I heard about him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? What does he say? <laughs> oh, no. So we were friends. No, he, he loved it, though. He, he oh, told he me to go okay. out and have a good time. Yes. Yeah, he, he definitely oh, the guy. I love that Wallace is talking about us. <laughs> this is huge for the show. <laughs> I think it's funny, too, with LeBron, like, on the subway with Wade. I mean, you know how you have, like, those, like, the dancers on the subway and then they ask for money? It's like he can't lie. If you're LeBron James, it's like, you know, I, like, if I'm a dancer, I'm like, I know your contract. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way you're like, I don't know if I have a change. It's like, you have this many million over eight years. Have you ever been mistaken for a celebrity or athlete? I get mistaken for Daniel Craig, the James Bond guy, on a regular basis. I get mistaken for uh, Robert De Niro. I can say that. I think McLovin. <laughs> Someone has thought I looked like Avril Lavigne. Brad Pitt ever? No, but it's a compliment. People think I'm the guy on Breaking Bad. Oh, Brian Cranston, I can see that. Plus, you, you seem like you might, you know, make drugs for a living. Josh Peck, I got Josh Peck along. I, oh, I don't know why. Oh, wow, I can see that. You look like a, a Peck 
Definitely not. What about Tom Cruise? Nope. Barbara Streisand? No, but I do look like my mom, who sometimes gets told that she looks like Valerie Bertinelli. We're two degrees from Valerie Bertinelli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bill, do you ever get anyone? Uh, sadly, no. I, 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 I never do. <laughs> uh, recently, though, I got, I got stared at by a guy at a store <laughs> who was the manager who thought he knew who I was, that he recognized me from somewhere, and then he said, uh, you sell shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I bought shoes from you once. He thought I was like a, like a shoe distributor for some, for some brand. That's a real misdirect right there. <laughs> yeah. Did you go with it? <laughs> Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should have. I didn't think that quickly. But. I was doing a show the other night, and uh, this this guy came out after the show, and he was he started praising this comic next to me. He was like, "You're you're one of my favorite comics. You're so great. You're one of my, one of the best." And then he turns to me and he goes, "And you were Sam Morell." <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That's all. He just walked away. Just confirmed who I was. <laughs> That's right. What can you do? Yeah. What can you, you get anyone spray? Not really. I think uh, when I was with the Knicks, they did an article in some magazine, and they had myself and Samuel Jackson next to each other. <laughs> so, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the, all my teammates are giving me crap the whole. Uh, for, like, Man, I, calling me Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. <laughs> pass the ball. I never thought about that until right now. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy to be famous and then get mistaken for like another fame. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, hey, what can I say? Because like, <laughs> I, I, was talking, I, no, I know, I know. It's like you either get Latrell Sprewell, who you are, or Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, that's that's exactly. like well, funny to me. I get myself all the time, and I'm like, nah, I, I get that. I tell this what I tell people. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you do that? Yeah, that's funny. I get that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you go then. I'm, oh no, I'm actually Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy Gobert is out because of, of a dirty play by Dion Waiters. It was pretty dirty. Even Tanya Harding was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try another one. Uh, I'm kidding, we're done. But I mean, well, this what is, happened? I didn't he just dove right into his knee and oh, it's a really? bone bruise. And Rudy Gobert, the second leading vote getter and defensive player of the year last year, out now for like four to six weeks. Oh, wow. This is a huge blow to Utah. He's a team. Yeah, he yeah. is a whole team. Defensively, at least that's, you know. He's oh, everything. Yeah. They're nothing. <laughs> What's he he's going for a loose ball then? I don't know. Now I, I, yeah, I didn't think it looked dirty. I think I mean it did look like he was just going for a loose ball. Yeah. I think. I think it's Dion Waiters and it's Rudy Gobert. So you're gonna go with Rudy Gobert over Dion Waiters. But I didn't think it looked dirty. No. No. And then Dion Waiters defended himself in the press. If only he could do that on court. <laughs> <laughs> This is an interesting one. Uh, Jimmy Butler opens up about a difficult relationship with Fred Hoiberg. Uh, Latrell, have you ever had a problem with the coach? Nah, not me. <laughs> never, never that. <laughs> what is it like when you connect with a coach? I mean, like, because Butler seems like he's annoyed, <clears throat> you know, by his, they could have gone his way or they could have gone the Hoiberg route, which is, you know, I guess more three-point shooting. Right. Butler is kind of a different type of player. He kind of fits Tibbs' style, right? I, I think Tibbs is more of a defensive coach, uh, grinded out hard nose. He, he coached me here in New York with Jeff, so I'm very familiar with the way he, he coaches and, and the system he wants to play. And then Fred wants to get up and down and play more of a fast-paced style of basketball. So I, I think for Jimmy, um, he saw a lot of success under Tibbs with uh, Chicago and, and, and the defensive stuff. So I think he's probably leaning more towards that. You ever have an issue with the director on set? You know, I was just thinking the same thing. I was thinking how oh, there's a, a real similarity there. Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know what? Jimmy Butler did what? Two years? Two years in Chicago? Well, it was more. More, more. I think he did. Right, but more. with that coach? Oh, oh right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. That's years. a good amount of time, man. You know, I've been with for a week maybe a director and wanted to split <laughs> and but not having you know I, I'm happy for him that he's able to move on and go to you know Minnesota and I think that team fits his strengths more as well just in terms of like Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns are such great offensive players but then Jimmy Butler is such a great perimeter defender so like he complements their offense very well 
So uh, I, I, think I also think he brings the element of leadership to that sure. team. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> such a young team, to have a veteran player that's been through playoff games and experienced some of the things that he has, I think that's going to go a long way for helping them as well. That's a great point yeah. because they also, they're a team that is terrible in the final two minutes. Right. And someone like Jimmy Butler, to, to have a guy to go on both ends. Right. Yeah. Who can defend the best player but then also take the last shot. I love that. Kobe Bryant. Uh, Kobe can't stay out of the headlines because he's, you defended the guy. Absolutely. It wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember some of those, there was a war zone. Oh, we, we, we definitely had our battles. I mean, I, honestly, it was fun, but it, he's such a tough cover. I mean, you, uh, you had to do your film work and you definitely knew who was coming in town the next day. Did you talk to him while you were defending him? No, I didn't, me and Kobe didn't do too much trash talking, actually. Some guys talk a lot. Kobe, he's kind of quiet. He's a, a silent assassin. He just goes about his business and quietly kills you. So he, he's, he's a different breed. Kobe Bryant said, if basketball is my biggest accomplishment, I failed. Uh, well, then I have bad news for him. <laughs> 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 I think this is it, Kobe. <laughs> yeah. You can't top that. When you're Kobe, how do you top that? Well, he hasn't failed. and and. I think that was a joke. Me, He's the, obviously a great the, the thing that to see, I think just the way he, uh, that last game in L.A. when he scored, what was it, 60? 60 60 like yeah. to see, and he hadn't been playing well that year. And to see him go out with 60, I mean, I think I talked about that for like a, a month afterwards. Sure. It, was, it was amazing to see him go out that way. I admire the fact that he still wants to, you know, move forward. He's still thinking in that way of like, I haven't arrived at something like I've, he's had this incredible accomplishment with this first half of his life or the first two chapters of his life. The fact that he's thinking ahead like that, I, you know, I admire that. Yeah. I just hope he doesn't make another rap album. I hope this isn't <laughs> what he's hinting at. This is another one of those. Those yeah. poet too, baby. Well, yeah. Him and Shaq? What's that? Him and Shaq. Oh, you, you want him and Shaq yeah. to come back together? Wow, yeah. you're the only one in that quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I respect it, Spree. I, just, I can't believe. Yeah, man. Well, this has been a great episode of People Talking Sports. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Spree. And uh, keep watching this show. I feel like we're really building some momentum. <laughs> <laughs>